In this video, we're going to go through all of the settings on the LG G3, and this will apply also for the C3 and B3, the 2023 models from LG. I'll be covering SDR, HDR, Dolby Vision, gaming, bright room, dark room for all the modes, and covering an accuracy perspective as well as if you want to, say, boost up brightness for a brighter room, and just go through each of the settings and what they do. Before that, let's thank Robert Zahn of Value Electronics for lending the G3 for review and for this video. Hello everyone, I'm Robert Zone from Value Electronics. We're a custom integrator and a retailer, premium audio and video products. Classy, thanks for inviting me back on your channel. I always love being here with you. Please stop by and visit our website, valueelectronics.com. We're well-respected in audio and video premium products. Mention to us when you call that you came from Classy Tech and uh, we'll extend every courtesy possible and provide the very best service and prices. Any technical advice that you need, please give us a call. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting many of Classy's members here. Thank you. So for the first step, I'm going to be using an Apple TV. Any streaming device that you use, I want to make sure that the settings on the device are correct before moving on with the TV. So with the Apple TV, for example, we want it to be in RGB high and have the match frame rate and match content on. Now before we get into the actual picture settings of the TV, there's some other settings on the TV that we need to go through. So after pressing the settings button on the remote, you can hit the settings wheel at the top of that menu to get into all of your settings. We're gonna to go to general and go down to energy saving and make sure that the energy saving is turned off where this will manipulate the brightness of the content that you're watching. Then I like to go up to the OLED care menu and I don't wanna have the image dimming uh, as I'm playing anything or watching anything. So I like to turn off the logo adjust and I also turn off the screen move or the pixel shifting. And then if you need a manual pixel refresh, that's also the menu where you find to do that. Turning those off are optional. And if you are worried about burn-in, you can leave them on. Next, I'm gonna to go to AI service and make sure all of the AI settings are turned off. Also, we're gonna check the software version or the firmware version, make sure the TV is up to date. As you can see, I'm on 3.10.24 firmware as of making this video. Next, if you go to TV information, you can see your total power on time and the TV will continue to break in in the first couple hundred hours. And then if we go to sound, if you have external speakers, an AVR or sound bar, this is where you would go to turn on eARC and then the digital sound output I would set to pass through. The options are grayed out at this particular time because at this point I was using the TV speakers. You can also see here is where you go to switch the type of sound output. And then if you are using TV speakers, I think the AI Sound Pro works pretty well on it. All right, now we're gonna get into picture settings. If this seems like it's going too fast for you, feel free to either pause the video or slow the playback speed to 0.75% and it'll slow it down. This video is still a half an hour trying to go fairly slowly and I don't wanna go too slow and then other people get upset that it's going too slow. So I like to sit at a menu, which is an SDR and go through and do all my SDR settings first. So when you're looking at the different picture modes, whether it's filmmaker, cinema, ISF expert, bright or dark, some of them do have differences, but most of them, the picture modes don't matter. They are just preset labels with preset settings. If you set the settings the same on all of them, they would look the same. But for the sake of just using the titles, I'm gonna use the ISF dark here to set up the dark accurate type SDR viewing. And if you put the OLED brightness all the way down to eight on the G3, that's 100 nits. And if you go up to 25, that's about 150. And then if you go up to about 40, that should be about 200 nits, which is about as bright as you would want for darkroom viewing. Now you do want to set it to your room and so that it's comfortable for your eyes. Um, so there's really not a right or wrong answer here. This is up to you and where you want to put it. Now, if you have a C3 or a B3, you're going to need a higher pixel light level to reach that. Um, so you would probably be looking at somewhere around 40 to 60 uh, for a C3 or B3. Now, as we go through the rest of the settings, pretty much everything in this menu we can leave alone. We want the contrast to stay at 85, the black level at 50, contrast enhancer stays off, gamma can stay at BT1886. Pretty much all that's the same. Now, when it comes to the color depth setting, it doesn't really matter if it's 50 or 55, but in the measurements that I took at 55, there was slightly less errors uh, in saturation at 55. 
But then if you go to the fine tune, this is a preference option here. You can go off low, medium, high. It should be off for accuracy. It's kind of like Sony's live color. The color gamut should definitely be on auto for the most accuracy. And our color temperature, you wanna keep it warm 50. But now you wanna go down to method and change that to 22 and then change the level adjustment all the way down to 2.5. That's because there's some near black crushing on this TV at the very bottom end. And we're just gonna increase the luminance here, the brightness level at the very bottom end by just plus five. And then that'll help with the shadows being a little more visible without being too crushed out. And it's not gonna raise them to where they're too bright. Now under the clarity menu, all of this is really subjective and up to you, but for accuracy, everything should be off. However, I do, like to put smooth gradation on low it does work pretty well true motion is your motion interpolation and deep blur and black frame insertion oled motion is the black frame insertion it will cut the brightness in half and cause flickering the de judder is the motion interpolation setting or you can use one of the presets like cinematic movement if you use any of those real cinema will get grayed out i would recommend for accuracy and no soap opera effect have real cinema on and true motion off however if you are sensitive to judder and panning motion then you can try cinematic movement and start there and set it how you want now we're going to go over to the isf expert bright and this will be for sdr in a bright room uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is on all of your inputs, you're going to want to change the aspect ratio to where it says user selection original and just scan on. This will make sure that there's no overscan issues. Also, every time you set one of these up, hit the apply to all inputs button so you don't have to do it more than once. All right, so now on the ISF Expert Bright, it defaults with the contrast too high at 100, which would cause clipping. So we're going to turn that down to 85. You can leave the OLED brightness at 100 which is going to be around 400 nits. And then if you use the peak brightness all the way up to high, that'll go up to about 600 nits in SDR. You really want to set this to your room and how bright your room is. If you don't have a sun soaked room, you can probably just leave the peak brightness off. The gamma adjustment is going to be up to you. 2.2 is going to be more visible in a very bright room, but a darker setting like 2.4 or BT 1886 is going to have a little more saturation. Now we're going to go back in the color menu. Again, you can leave the color at 50 or put it to 55. Color gamut was incorrectly set with the ISF bright out of the box, so I set that to auto. And then the same thing, we're going to go to method 22 points, go all the way down to the 2.5%. Except this time, because the OLED light is so bright, we don't need to increase this as much, so we're only going to go plus 3 on the adjust brightness at the 2.5% level. And then under clarity, it's going to be the same thing again. However, you can make some tweaks and adjustments depending on what you typically watch during the day. So if you watch more sports or news or things like that, you can use more of the clarity options here. If it's not really critical viewing, especially if you're upscaling from a cable box or something, uh, you may want to play around with some of these settings and see what you like. And that's going to be it for the Brightroom SDR. We're going to apply it to all inputs. And now I'm going to start up some content that's in Dolby Vision. And we're going to go through and do our Dolby Vision settings. Now HDR and Dolby Vision is, to be accurate, a set standard for how bright the content is supposed to be, and there shouldn't be any deviation from that. However, if you are watching Dolby Vision or HDR in a bright room, it can be very difficult to watch because it's going to be quite dark. So that's what your cinema home setting is gonna be for, especially in Dolby Vision, which is gonna be much brighter. But we're gonna start with cinema and use that as our Dolby Vision accurate mode you can see i'm going to reset the settings and there's really nothing you need to touch with the dolby vision cinema mode out of the box everything is going to be set where it should be the only thing that i change here is under the clarity again i put the smooth gradation to low and that helps when especially in skies when you see big steps in color so it goes like a really dark blue to like a different shade of blue and it's not very smooth it'll help smooth that out that's the only thing that I'm going to do and then apply to all inputs. And then you can just go to the AI service and you see a lot of this is grayed out for the cinema mode. And now we're going to go in, into the cinema home one, which we're going to use for a brighter room viewing of Dolby Vision. So in Dolby Vision, the cinema home mode is going to overtrack what's called the EOTF. And that just means that everything's going to be brightened up brighter than it's supposed to be in HDR. So as we go through the settings here, Here's where you can play with stuff because this is going to be preference based. Under the expression enhancer, the detail setting is just going to darken some of the mid-range. 
but if you're trying to make this for a bright room, you may want to use the brightness setting as that will brighten the upper end of the mid range, giving a little more punch to any brighter objects. The only other thing you need to do for this mode is go into clarity, put the sharpness to 10, or you can do zero, it doesn't really matter. And then you can turn off all of the processing stuff that you want or leave it on, adjust your motion. Again, I put the smooth gradation to low and then apply to all inputs. Now, if you've heard of Dolby Vision IQ, this is the mode that gets it for you, but you have to have the AI brightness setting turned on, which will use the light sensor of the TV to adapt the brightness of the shadow and dark areas of the image to kind of fit with the lighting in your room. And that's gonna be it for Dolby Vision. And then we're gonna switch over to some HDR10 content. So you can just go to YouTube and go to an HDR video. It'll put the TV into HDR10. And now we need to do a couple modes here. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and use Cinema and Cinema Home so that it matches what you have with Dolby Vision. You can use Filmmaker, but there is no Filmmaker in Dolby Vision. It doesn't really matter here. So again, just to keep it lined up. So you can see here, there's no difference when I set the settings the same. Filmmaker and Cinema are the same. Um, we're just gonna change the settings in Cinema. So that way you just only need to remember Cinema for accuracy watching, Cinema Home for Bright Room. Now in Cinema and Filmmaker, the dynamic tone mapping is on by default and it shouldn't be, not for accuracy. So under brightness, that is the one thing you need to turn off. Then under color, everything in Cinema should be set correctly. You go to white balance, make sure that it says warm 50 and then you're done here. And then clarity menu, just like before, this is up to you. I'm gonna put smooth gradation to low, leave everything else off except real Cinema should be on. And then I'm gonna apply this to all inputs and then we're gonna change back over to Cinema Home, which as you can see is a much brighter mode, and that's because I've already set some of the settings here. You can see dynamic tone mapping is on, that's gonna be on by default. And if you were to turn that off, that's gonna make a big difference in the brightness. And then with the expression enhancer, you can see if I do detail, how it darkens more of the mid-range. It doesn't really add detail like it says, it's just kind of playing tricks with the way the EOTF tracks. Uh, dynamic tone mapping, turning that back on, and then going to detail, less of an effect, but it still is darkening a little bit of the mid-range, and if we go to brightness, this is going to be as bright as it can get with dynamic tone mapping on and the brightness under expression enhancer. Now in Cinema Home, I do believe the white balance defaults to somewhere around warm 30, so I did change that to warm 50, and then clarity menu, again, smooth gradation on low, set your motion settings how you like it, and then any of the other clarity settings are gonna be up to you, and we're gonna to apply to all inputs. And then we're gonna to go to the AI settings again for Cinema Home, and this is completely optional, but if you want to have the AI settings on, this is the mode to have them on. The AI genre, I don't really like, sometimes it can mess with the motion or the color, but again, this is all personal preference here if you want to apply these. Again, AI brightness will use the light sensor to adjust darker detail when there's lights on in the room. The AI Picture Pro says it only works with non-copyrighted content. There's a lot of confusion around it. I never really see it doing anything. And that's it. Now we're gonna switch over to gaming. So starting with the Xbox, I'm gonna have it at 4K 120 Hertz. You can see we get all the green check marks, except I have Dolby Vision off for gaming. That's because without a calibration, the Dolby Vision game mode is very inaccurate. It's just like the Cinema Home mode. So I do not recommend using Dolby Vision for gaming unless you have it professionally calibrated. Now you can see here where it says standard in the middle, it's not adjustable. This seems to be a bug right now with the current firmware. Sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. Uh, most of the time it's not. And you'll see me show that a few times. So again, right there where it says game genre and it's grayed out, that's what I'm talking about. Normally there would be different presets. Now moving on, the input delay, if you set it to boost and you're playing at 60 hertz, it will improve input lag by a few milliseconds, but it only works at 60 hertz and it can affect gamma, so I leave it off and leave it on standard. If you wanna change the menu color, it's right there. You can change it from purple, green, and orange. Now if you go to the left and go down to picture, this is where you're gonna be able to adjust picture settings for your game mode because they are most of them grayed out in the normal advanced menu, unlike last year where you could adjust them there. Uh, we'll see if that changes in the future with firmware updates. 
If you're playing on PC, you can adjust to 21 by 9 or 32 by 9. But once you hit advanced settings, then you can go into the normal settings menu. You see a lot of the stuff is grayed out, but you can still adjust the gamma and overall brightness. Uh, on the G3, the gaming SDR brightness is at max is about 300 nits. Uh, the color temperature in game mode always defaults to zero, so definitely want to change that to warm 50. And then again, with SDR mode, we're going to go on the 22 point, go down to the very bottom, the 2.5%, and we're going to increase this to plus five. And as stated earlier, that will help with some of the parts of the image at the very, very darkest end from being too dark. Now, when you go into the clarity menu, a lot of the times this will be grayed out and not adjustable. If they are adjustable like this, they're not going to actually do anything. So just leave them off. Don't mess with them like smooth gradation. If you put that on high, you'll see no difference when actually in a game. And if you go to true motion and OLED motion, that's black frame insertion. It only works at 60 Hertz. So with the Xbox at 120, you see that it's not doing anything. So at this point I did connect back to my receiver just to show that if you go to the arc and e arc settings and you have this set to pass through, you can get all of the uncompressed HD audio to work. Um, but I do want to go down to general and just show AI service, AI brightness setting is on. Every time I go into game mode, SDR, HDR on different like PlayStation, Xbox, and so on, it's always on by default. So turn that off. Now on the Xbox, I'm going to go into the audio setting. You see it's on DTSX and you can do Dolby Atmos. All of this works fine. Um, and at 120 hertz, there's no audio dropouts. There's no syncing issues. It just works as it should. Okay, so now we can go to Calibrate HDR for Games on the Xbox menu. And here, if you press and hold both bumpers and triggers at the same time, it brings up a little menu in the top right. It tells you what each of these screens are set to. Now you can see when I go press the settings button on the remote, the uh, genre settings are selectable. We do want to keep it on standard. So for accuracy, you're just going to leave it on standard anyway. But for those who like to mess around with the picture profiles, again, sometimes they're working, sometimes they're not, at least as of right now. So now we're going to go just run through the picture settings. The first time you go into HDR game mode, um, it's going to be too blue, so we're going to have to fix that. You can see now in HDR, the dynamic tone mapping option will show up. It'll be on on by default. We want to change that to HGIG and that's how we're going to set up the consoles with it in HGIG. If it's on on or off, then these patterns on the consoles won't work correctly and you want to set it to HGIG and then set each of the systems to 1500 nits. Now with a professional calibration, you would actually use the off setting if that's how your calibrator does your game mode calibration, but short of that, without a calibration, you're gonna keep using HGIG. So now heading back to the advanced settings, um, again, we can see most of it's gonna be grayed out, except you can still do the dynamic tone mapping here, and the expression enhancer is available here for accuracy, you're gonna leave this off. Um, if you're not worried about accuracy, you can set this how you want it. So on both of the white screens for the Xbox, I'm setting them to 1500. And the black dark screen, you're just going to make all the way darker until it's all zeros. And then if we go to color on the TV menu and go to white balance, like I said, it should be at zero by default. We're going to change that to warm 50, which is as close as it'll get to D65 without a calibration. Under clarity, you can see pretty much everything's grayed out again. We're gonna apply it to all inputs. Uh, another thing I can show you, if you go down to general and external devices, you can set it into 444 mode if you want to. I experienced a lot more issues with that enabled, at least with this firmware and this particular panel. So I have it off here, but you're free to try it out and see if you wanna use it. The deep color option is here as well, although that should automatically be detected when your device is turned on. If you do want to use 444, you would need to set that first before doing the other settings. All right, and that's going to be it for the Xbox. Now, you see where I was just at the HDR setup screen, and then I hit OK, which would take it back to the dashboard, which is SDR. Uh, as of the time of making this video, there seems to be that issue again, uh, which we had last year, where with the Xbox, there was handshake issues. Uh, through the HDMI when switching between SDR and HDR and you'd get no signal. Sometimes it'll show multiple Xboxes down in your inputs. Um, I'm still getting reports from other people who have 2022 and 2021 models that run into this as well. 
and hopefully LG will get this fixed. But I did want to point this out. If you experience this, you're not alone. You're probably going to have to get up, unplug the HDMI, plug it back in, or unplug the TV, something like that to get it working. If you are playing a game, regardless of the system, that has HDR sliders, you're going to put this around 1500 or as close to 1500 as it allows you to. If the game doesn't have a nit value like that, then you're just going to have to try and set it up as it describes it or look up a video for that particular game. Also, at any point, if you press the green button a bunch of times, you'll bring up the VRR information. It also shows the refresh rate and some other information if you want to see that. Uh, you press the back button to make it go away, and every time you do it, it'll just go to a different corner of the TV. And then bringing up the game bar again, you can see that the genre mode here is adjustable again at this point in time. Um, however, for accuracy, you're just going to want to leave it on standard, but if you're not worried about that and you want the to mess around with it, go ahead. I'm going to switch over to the Nintendo Switch. So on the Nintendo Switch, you don't really need to change anything. Uh, if you go down to TV settings, it's just going to be automatic. It's a 1080p system. Um, and then we're going to go into a game, and there's a couple little differences. This is all going to be an SDR. So this is one of the situations where I kind of like the black frame insertion or the OLED motion turned on. Yes, it will cut the brightness down, but it should still be around 160 nits if you're at 100 OLED light. And you will see flicker, especially on white. Um, but after a few minutes and with color in a game, that flicker seems to become less noticeable. If you do try to put on the boost mode, then the OLED motion is not available. The Switch does not have VRR support, so those can be turned off. And then I'm going to go back into the advanced settings menu. Uh, again, if this is like your only system or you're setting it up on, you know, for the first time, your picture is going to be blue. So we're going to just go through all the basic stuff again. Turn the white balance to warm 50, set the 2.5% to plus 5, that kind of stuff. There is going to be a bit of a difference for clarity menu, we'll come back to in a moment. The AI brightness again is on by default here. So what I wanted to show you is because the Nintendo Switch is a 1080p system, um, and so there's upscaling involved, that means the super resolution will actually have an effect. It's a very minor effect, but it's still there. So what some of you may want to do is apply super resolution. Um, even going to high, it's very, very minor what it does. And the way this works is the super resolution kind of ties into the sharpness slider. So at the default of 10, you're not going to really see anything happen when you turn on super resolution. And because it's grayed out in the advanced menu, you now have to go back to the uh, game optimizer. And here you can adjust the sharpness setting, which is now controlling the super resolution. And you'll see that nothing really happens until you get to about 25. At 25, it's like it clicks on. And to really see its effect, you're probably going to have to get up and get close to the TV and then kind of go up and down on the slider and set it where you want it. Uh, now you can see what happens when I toggle the black frame insertion on and off. Yes, there's a big reduction in the brightness. However, I still think it's plenty bright enough for most moderately lit rooms. And you do gain quite a bit of motion resolution with it turned on. However, it's certainly not for everybody, especially if you can't get used to the flicker. Now, moving over to the PS5, when you're in the HDR menu, uh, we're pretty much going to be just like the Xbox as far as settings. You can see right now the uh, genre setting here is working, but then that stops working in a moment. Um, going into the menu here, going down, again, pretty much everything the same as it was on the Xbox. You don't need the FreeSync turned on on PlayStation though, because PlayStation doesn't have that. Uh, so it just depends, like if you're going through a receiver, leave it on. If you're plugged direct to the TV, it doesn't really matter. Going to the picture settings, going again, we're just gonna make sure we're in HGIG for the tone mapping setting. And we're gonna leave it in HGIG for the HDR setup on the console. Again, if you wanna switch it to dynamic tone mapping later or for specific games, you can. Uh, now we're going to go into the advanced settings again. Expression enhancer is off. Still an HJG. This is kind of repeating myself here, but it is what it is. If this was the first thing that you were setting up, then again, the color temperature would be at zero in game mode. So you need to set that to warm 50. Under clarity, pretty much everything's going to be grayed out. Again, you're going to want to go down to AI service. Make sure the AI brightness is off. Uh, I had already done that for this input. Um, now we're going to set up the PlayStation 5 HDR setting itself. 
You're gonna press down on the controller until you can't go down anymore. You're gonna count upwards 18 clicks on both of these white patterns. Again, go all the way darker until it doesn't let you go anymore. And then go up 18 clicks. On the black one, you're just gonna go all the way down to darker and then you're done there. Under the screen and video, everything here can just stay on automatic, except you do wanna go down to HDR. You're gonna to wanna to put that to on when supported, but first I'm gonna to toggle it off so that we can get into SDR. That way when you do play an SDR game, all your settings are correct. Game genre, everything is still showing up right now. However, you can see OLED motion or the black frame insertion is grayed out. But if you go down to ALLM and turn that off, then we can see the OLED motion is now back. I typically don't use this on the PS5 because most of what I play on it is in HDR or at 120 hertz anyway. But if there's anything in SDR and 60 hertz that you want to have it for, uh, that's how you can enable it. All right, so moving on from that, the input delay, again, I'm gonna leave it standard. You can change that to boost if you want, just know that it will affect you know, your shadow detail a little bit and gamma. Uh, now you can see the game genre setting is grayed out again. LG, as far as I know, is aware of this and working on a fix, so hopefully in the near future you won't have to worry about that. All right, now heading back into the picture settings, it's just like the other SDR game mode picture settings. Gonna pretty much leave all of this alone. Uh, and then we're going to go to advanced picture settings. Now under the OLED light, I said earlier the 100 setting is about 300 nits. When in game mode, if you want it lower, uh, say 200 nits, that would be around 55 on the G3. And 150 nits is around 35 on the G3. And then 15 is about 100 nits on the G3. And again, this is only for game mode. And if you are on a C3 or a B3, uh, those numbers would need to be higher as those models can typically only get to around 200 nits in game SDR mode. All right, so once we're done, we're gonna put the HDR back to on when supported. Uh, again, you can see me trying and the game genre selection isn't working still. Uh, again, hopefully that'll get fixed with an update some point in the near future, hopefully by the time you are watching this video. All right, that's gonna be all the devices for this video. The only thing I did not really cover is PC. That's gonna require a video of its own. Uh, if you need something before I get around to doing that video, I do have using LG OLEDs as a monitor um, in previous videos. It should be fairly similar. Um, you can start there, but I do plan to have a PC settings video for the G3 in the near future. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe and keep an eye out for that video to come. Other than that, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, leave a comment and a like below. And I hope to see you all in a future video and have a good one. Thanks for watching.